So, uh, but you know, we're laser focused on this district. So, so we were interested in specifically how do these things affect the district? How does this affect taxpayers in this district? And really, I think, you know, because he's going to get so much attention from his appropriations position. Yeah. Uh, we are, our goal is to respectfully insist that our questions are answered and respectfully insist on a town hall. Our congressman is the chair of House Appropriations. He is one of the most powerful members of Congress. He sets the budget. He approves the budget. That makes us as constituents some of the most important and powerful constituents in the country. So let's let him know that we know that and that we'd like him to be representing our district. Myself included. We are 105 or so constituents in this district. Um, and we have benefited from the ACA. Um, some of us are on ACA plans. Around how many people? All right. So if that coverage gets taken away, what happens to these people and other people who can't be here today? Um, finally, the last and I think the most important point and the reason why we are all here gathered in a hallway on a Friday in the middle of the day, um, many of us having driven half an hour, 45 minutes to get here from all parts of this district, um, we have people who would like to meet with their congressmen. And in other districts, people get to meet with their congressmen. A, a friend of mine called me yesterday and she said, I went to my congressman's office, I spoke to the district director, um, and they gave me three different ways to make a meeting with my congressman. Where are our ways to make a meeting with our congressman? Uh, I'm on the meeting request list. I think many of us are. Um, how many people are on the meeting request list? Has anybody heard back from their request? Yeah, I've been on that yeah. list since November. Um, the congressman says he meets with people in diners. Uh, he says he does town hall meetings. We are not seeing constituent communication. Uh, we have some really urgent questions. People are concerned. These are difficult times. And I think we all just believe that we should have the right to speak to our congressman. How can our congressman represent us if he refuses to meet with us? If he won't meet with us, then he's not representing us. He's representing something else or somebody else. And I think we deserve to know who or what he's representing because it doesn't feel like he's representing us. You're here. You're here. District week. The congressman will be here the third week of February. We know that because Congress is closed. Everybody goes back to their districts to do events with their constituents. Will he hold a town hall or other constituent event or individual meetings or really we're willing to meet with him anyway he'd like to meet with us but what is he going to do during district week when he is here in district 11 to meet with his constituents finally we've we've been told that uh he has a complicated schedule and and i'm sure that is true um many of us have complicated schedules too there are people here with infants who probably aren't sleeping through the night uh it's not easy to get here with an infant when you're not sleeping through the night there are people coming here from uh all across the district sussex county essex county this is not close or convenient or easy. We're paying for parking to be here. We're leaving work to be here. People are taking off of work to be here. Um, and our congressman won't meet with us. So that's, that's, I think, the biggest question. All of these questions come back to, why won't he meet with his constituents? Well, we appreciate you guys listening. And I think, I think one thing that I think is very, very clear to me is that the people in this district office are making time for us and listening to us. Um, what we'd like is our congressman to listen to us, but um, it's very, it's really helpful that you guys are listening to us, and I think we all respect that. So if we can just maybe do a little applause for Anthony for just taking time out of his busy day to listen to our concerns and Thank pass them along. I appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Please note we're being very respectful to the office. No. I'd like to reiterate something a gentleman said the last time I was here two weeks ago, which is we will know the congressman heard us when he schedules a town hall. That's the way for him to let us know that we've been heard. Let's see. We have people who have individual letters that they have written about things that they wanted to ask or talk to the congressman about. Um, if you have a letter, can you please pass it forward? This is uh, letters and messages for the congressman that people have handed to me. Um, do you want to take a moment to grab these since <laughs> okay. there's a lot of them? Um, <laughs> they might not all fit in an envelope. 
Oh, and this is this is a gift, yes? yes. Chocolate? Okay, so this is chocolate for people in the office or anybody who would like them. Fair enough. We also have some while you were out pink slips for the congressman, signed by everyone in attendance here. Oh, awesome. With a list of people's concerns and what they're interested in. I extremely appreciate how polite and calm you guys have been. Uh, I love the fact that you guys come in because you know you're you're getting your voices heard. Uh, you're doing the right thing. As long as you guys keep up this attitude, you know we'll we'll have a a great correspondence and relationship. I, I look forward to seeing you guys every time you guys come in. Does the congressman know that we've been coming here every week on Fridays? Absolutely. And does he know the numbers of people who have been here? Absolutely. They all Fantastic. Thank you. That's that's really good to know. Thank you very much for making that happen.